Good day once again, everyone. And uh, once we are looking at um, trigonometry this time around. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. Um, so uh, this part, question five, I've actually, I'm going to divide it into two sections, right? And the reason for that is that I just don't want the videos to be too long. I know it discourages you guys. So uh, I'm going to start with the first portion and I'm going to do the next in another video. All right, so let's get right into it. So um, in this case, we're given, right, we've got root 13 sine of x plus 3, which is equal to 0. And they tell us that it's located between 90 and 270, right? So how we deal with these ones, of course, we're going to have our cast diagram, right? So you remember, so that's C-A-S-T. Okay, we know that, um, uh, you know, the different trigonometric ratios or, or functions in this case are positive at different points, right? So we've got, uh, so for uh, 5.1, so I'm going to just start with the drawing of it. Okay, so we've got the sine uh, of x being equal to 3, negative 3 rather, uh, over root 13, right? So that is us simplifying that. Okay, so that's going to be equal to negative 3 over root 13. Now remember, sine is y over x, or you can say that's opposite over hypotenuse, right? Now think about it. Where is the sine uh, of any angle negative, right? It would be negative at two points, right? It would be negative on the third quadrant, as well as on the fourth quadrant, okay? Right, remember, only 10 is positive here and only cos is positive there. All of them are, are positive here and here specifically sine is positive. So we're looking at between those two. But remember our restriction, they've given us a restriction between 90, they said X must be between and 90 and 270. So I'm going to use a different color there to just indicate it. So they are telling us that theta, or x rather, must be an angle, I said, I'm using a different color, right? So uh, it must be an angle between 90 and 270. So it must be in either the second or the third quadrant, right? Now notice where do we have two ticks? We've got two ticks on the third quadrant. So it means that our triangle will actually lie on the third uh, quadrant. All right, so let's try and draw it there quickly. Right, so uh, there's our triangle. So we know that our y value uh, will be negative three. So that makes sense. And our, uh, sorry, y over r, I said y over x. I'm not sure why I wrote x there. So that's y over r, so that's root of 13, right? Um, apologies about that. So uh, in this case, there we have it. So we now need to find, obtain our x value. So we know x squared is going to be r squared minus y squared. So this is going to be root 13, okay, squared minus... Um, our y value is negative 3 squared, right? So this is going to be 13 minus uh, 9, okay? So that would give us 4, right? And of course, x should be plus or minus uh, 2. Um, so 13 minus 9, that gave us 4. And of course, to get the value of x, we take the square root of 4. So x squared is equal to 4. Okay, let me just not rush. And so x would be plus or minus 2. Now note, ladies and gents, you still need to go and check. Where is it? Is it negative or positive? So it will definitely be negative. So you'll have a negative value for x there, right, on your uh, triangle. So it means that uh, we are going to take the solution where x is equal to negative 2, right? Uh, because that's what happens in the third quadrant. All right, now. Um, now, they say to us, as, uh, without using a calculator, we need to determine the sine of 360 plus x, right? Okay, so we're looking at sine of 360. So that's 5.1.1, the sine of 360 uh, plus x. Now, please remember, we're going to use our reduction formula here. 
right um whenever you've got something greater than 360 now think about it where's 360 plus x and uh, there's 360 there if you add you are back in the first quadrant right so that would be sine of x but another way if you've got anything greater than uh, 360 you can just subtract 360 right so this would be the same as the sine of x that's in the first quadrant right so sine of x we already have uh, so that's going to be equal to um, negative 3 over the root of 13, right? So let's go on to 5.1.2, okay? So they say we need to find 10 of x, right? So 10 of x, we know this is equal to y over x, or we can say this is uh, opposite over adjacent, okay? Right? Our y value, right? We, you remember we said that's negative 3 and our x value is negative 2. So this will be negative 3 divided by negative 2. We can f actually say this is 3 over 2. Okay, right. So 5.1.3, um, that's cos of 180 plus x, right? So in using our reduction formula, so cos of 180 plus x please remember cos of 180 plus x where is 180 plus x that's in the th uh, third quadrant right and uh, how is cos in the third quadrant okay so uh cos remember this is 180 here if we say 180 plus that falls in the third quadrant and we know that cos is negative in the third quadrant right so that's going to be negative cos of x Please, if you haven't watched our videos on uh, uh, this section, please do yourself a favor. Okay, so that's minus cos of x. So, uh, cos of x, that's x over r, right? Uh, so, in this case, that would give us negative. Um, our x value is negative 2 over r, which is root 13. Okay, right. So, this would give us 2 over square root of 13. Now, ladies and gents, if they ever ask you to rationalize the denominator, right? So remember, uh, we can express this. We'll multiply by root 13 so that we get rid of the square root on the denominator, right? And what we will have is 2 root 13 uh, over 13. That is what you'd get. As your final answer okay but nothing wrong if you left it as that okay right so let's go to uh, the next question now they say to us determine the following uh, uh, sorry the value uh, of the following expression without using a calculator okay so we've got cos of 90 plus x okay so let me try and write it down there Okay, so we've got cos of uh, 90 plus, uh, did they say theta? Yeah, I thought I saw theta. Sine theta minus 180, okay. And we've got sine of theta minus 180 as well as plus 3, uh, plus 3 sine of negative theta. Okay, sine of minus theta. Now again, remember, ladies and gents, what we're going to do is we're going to use our reduction formula, right, to try and obtain that solution, right? Now let's start with the top part. So we've got cos of 90 plus. Remember, again, we're using our cast diagram, okay? So cos of 90 plus, where is this? This is in the second quadrant, right? How is cos in the second quadrant? Uh, right, only sine is positive there, so it means that cos would be negative, right? But now, remember, because we've got 90, whenever we use 90 and 270, right? Remember that we change uh, to our uh, co-ratios, right? Uh, in this case, so, uh, or, or we can call them co-functions, all right? So in this case, uh, we are going to have minus the cos i mean minus the co-ratio of sine uh, of cos is sine right so that's going to be minus the sine of theta okay 
Right, and then we go to the denominator. Right, we've got sine of theta minus 180. So, because you've got a negative there, it's better when we work with 180 minus, right? So, how do we actually uh, fix that? So, we can just simply fix that by adding 360, okay? So, whenever you've got something weird, uh, you can either add or subtract 360, right? So that um, uh, in this case, it becomes more palatable, something that you can actually work with, right? So uh, if I add 360 there, what does it become? 360 minus 180 would give me positive 180. So I can actually write this as 180 plus theta, okay? Right, so I added 360 to the previous one, so I end up with 180 minus theta. The same thing I can do here, just add 360. So that becomes 360 minus theta, right? So I will have um, sine of 180 plus theta. Remember, this would be in the second quadrant. So that would be negative. That's sine of theta plus we've got 3. So sine of 360 minus theta. Um, by the way, is it added or is it multiplied? Yes, okay. Right, so uh, that's uh, sine of 360 minus. That would be in the fourth quadrant. Again, sine is negative there. So this would be the same as negative the sine. I mean, uh, negative 3 sine theta. Okay, so... And uh, that would be negative 3 sine of theta, right? So now what do we have? We've got minus sine of theta. And at the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a uh, negative sine theta as a common factor, right? Negative sine theta. What will I have? I'll have 1 plus 3 in that case, right? So... Again, so we realize that can cancel because negative divided by negative is a positive. So we're left with a 1 at the top. So our final answer would be 1 over 4. Right. As I said, ladies and gents, uh, for the sake of not making this too long, uh, it can get exhausting. Right. I'm going to do the next part in a different video. Uh, please just look out for that. I'm going to publish it probably in an hour. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.